Yes, yes, y'all. That's Suicide Kings right there, King Cole and Joey Knuckles. And we've got Joey on the phone with us right now, all the way from Calgary. What's good, brother? Yo, what's good, Robbie? How you doing, brother? Chilling, chilling. That's a crazy joint right there, featuring Apathy and self-titled demigods. Man, that's 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 a heavy one. Shot callers. Thank you, man. Thank you. Yeah, we had, we had a lot of fun making that, and uh, yeah, turned out exactly the way we wanted it to. And the homies, App and Self, uh, couldn't ask for a better experience than them too. Really came out cool. Yeah, it's one of my favorite joints. Word up. What's it like working with those guys? I know I just got a chance to see Apathy for the first time on uh, on Friday there. He was rocking in Hamilton at the cookout, too. Um, I was just telling the people about that. But what's uh, what's it like doing a record with them? And I know I see you guys got the video out as well. So what's that like working, you know? Yeah, it was really good. We we met up with those guys on uh, the first Canadian tour they did like two years ago, I think, something like that, like two summers ago. Mm-hmm. Um, so we did that with them and, uh, you know, chopped it up on the road with them and, uh, you've been on the road and stuff, so you know how it is. And I mean, you don't work with every single artist necessarily that you might, you might tour with, but, um, these guys were cool, man. And it just, you know, we had the same kind of idea for a joint and they were like, yeah, sounds cool. Send us the beat, uh, send them the beat. We went from there. We, we, you know, we started getting verses back and, and uh, actually got a little bit of time to be able to, you know, work on the song, even though it's, you know, apps in Connecticut and Celsius in Florida, and I'm here, you know, nowadays, you know, you don't get to do a lot of studio time when everybody, you know, lives so far away, but we got to collaborate a lot on the joint, actually, just, you know, that way, so it was cool, yeah, it was really cool. Um, brought him out here for the video last summer, and uh, that turned out awesome as well. Big shout out to my man, uh, Dylan at Mary Mary the Giants editing and uh, Mike McLaughlin City Bird Films they they helped out a lot with that video so it wouldn't have been possible without them. Yeah, no, it looks nice, looks clean. Yeah, proper things, proper things, and that the album's littered with uh, with heavy you know features. You get you worked with Snack, obviously Snack the Ripper. You, you've been yeah. touring with him, uh, touring with MOP as well. And those guys are uh, definitely on that same vein as like Apathy and Self. I know just uh, with myself doing uh, a few shows with them, they're they're really like just down to earth dudes and like you know yeah, easy easy sure. to talk to and you know all about that real hip hop. It's good to see that too nowadays. I mean, not nowadays, well, just in general, you know. And you know, I mean, obviously, it's always got to be. Everyone's got to be, you know, business has to be taken care of, but if it can be taken care of in a good way and everyone's cool and stuff, it's it's a lot easier to work, you know, it makes you want to work with people more, you know. Definitely. So it, was a good, it was a good experience with, with pretty much, I mean, everybody on the record, it, it worked out really good, so, yeah. I yeah, know it sounds sounds tight, man. I was listening to it a couple of times when I was out on the road there on that last tour. Had it with yeah, Mr. Thank you. yeah. We just we just actually met up here in Calgary, right? Yeah. 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 yeah that was yeah. dope. <laughs> Yeah, Mocha Show. Uh, yeah, it was good. Word up, yeah, man. Thanks for coming out for that. That was a that was a hype night for sure. Yeah, it was one of my one of my work day. I had to be up early and we played early. One of those kind of things. But I mean, like I said before, when we talked, it's good to meet you. And uh, you know, I hear out here good things you're doing out in Ontario and stuff like that. So it's it's good to kind of link up with you. You know, even if it was just for a minute. Definitely, man, for sure. Yeah, next for sure. next time next time I'm out there, maybe we'll get a chance to kick it for a bit outside of the, yeah, we'll the show profit, environment. We'll profit for sure, no yeah. doubt, right? Maybe it'll be a little warmer too, right? It's Calgary weather, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Word up, definitely. That's what's good. So, uh, so you've been uh, on the road quite a bit. I know you started off in Detroit, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, I was born and raised in Detroit. Yep. Uh, I moved to Canada about four years ago. Okay. Uh, yeah, I've been out here doing that. Um and, uh, yeah, started off in Detroit. I, you know, my background kind of made my bones in, like, uh, the Detroit hardcore scene. I don't know if, uh, you know, the, the hardcore scene meaning kind of like that punk rock, really heavy street music, you know. Um, and if anybody knows on the air what I'm talking about, word up to the hardcore heads out there. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> you know, for sure, so, yeah, yeah, started off, like, singing in a band and stuff like that. And I kind of, you know, we did a lot of touring that way you know into europe and touring the states and, and stuff like that and uh when i moved to canada i always messed with hip-hop but it was kind of like you know hardcore is my household just so happened to be at that time that was what i was touring with and, and all that uh, i played in a band called the alliance from detroit and i played in a earlier band called hide um yeah and then always messed around you know i had a lot a lot of mc friends from detroit still 
Um, you'll see some of them on the record, like Aztec, The Barfly, and uh, Cancer. Homies back from Detroit, man, have been doing it, you know, since since back in the day, right? Um, so, yeah, it was just when I got out here, didn't really know anybody in Canada, you know, so I started working more on my hip-hop project, and it actually... We'll get into the story how I met King Cole, the other half of Suicide Kings, but he ain't here right now. <laughs> um, I was back in Detroit visiting. Cole used to play in like a hardcore metal band called Gravemaker. They were touring the States. Just so happened I went out to Detroit, legendary venue called The Magic Stick, um, to see the band he was touring with, which was Terror, a uh, big hardcore band from L.A., and... Uh, Long story short, I got to yapping with somebody outside how I was moving to Calgary. He was like, you're from Calgary? I said, no, I'm from Detroit, but I'm moving there. Um, we were freestyling, just doing the thing outside. He was like, yo, I make beats. I'm like, well, cool, because I don't know anybody out there. And, <laughs> you know, long story short, man, he had about another month on tour. Once he got home, he hit me up. And, you know, the rest is what you're seeing right now. Word up, word up. That's nice. Yeah, it's, it's a actually crazy story how he was from Calgary and I was coming here, but we actually met in Detroit, just random, you know. And it was pretty wild. So Yeah, it's dope. And then you got a chance to link up when you're out there and making some killer music together for sure. Yeah, thank you, brother. I appreciate that. I uh, know he's nice on the ones and twos, too. I like that. He's good. Yeah, he's good, man. He, you know, we, we're both too growing together as, as, you know, artists as well, you know, working together. Um, uh, we put out the first joint, uh, Reign Supreme, like maybe two, two and a half years ago now. And I mean, you can, you should be able to hear the progression through the records, you know, that we, we were just getting to know each other and each other's style at that point. And I think we really nailed it with Crown of Thorns. We're pretty, we're pretty happy about that release. So for sure, man, it's, it's complete. Yeah. Full project and just the sounds on it. They're all banging instrumentals. You guys come hard. And the lyrics, you know, everything, it's all real hip-hop stuff. I definitely enjoy Thank listening you, yeah. to it. Yeah. We try, we try, you know. <laughs> it's good music for sure. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about, because you are from Detroit area, and, uh, you know, that's a big, you know, kind of capital of hip-hop in the States. A lot of really, really dope MCs have come out of that area. You know, you okay. can't... You can't uh, not talk about you know one of the number one MCs in the game of course Eminem who was yeah. uh, you know born and raised in in the di dirty D as they call it you know what uh, what's yeah. that like the environment you know growing up around uh, that scene in Detroit and uh, I hear a lot from over here across the border you know I've only got a chance to go down there once um, and it was like quick in and out type thing so I didn't really get to see much. But right. what I did see was like kind of like really uh, like I was just like, yo, it's like they're not taking care of things here or something. And then we hear that yeah. like the whole city went bankrupt or something and like no other parts in the country want to come in to help them out and stuff. And it had something to do with like the steel industry that was like huge that was there. And then all of a sudden yeah. it got completely shut down and everyone lost their jobs, lost their homes and everything. So like if you can kind of like f as someone who lived there and experienced that kind of stuff, can you talk a little bit about, you know, the situation that happened there as far as like the poverty and, and that and how they're, you know, kind of coming back to rejuvenate the city now? Yeah, well, I mean, again, I've been I've been gone for four years, but I go home. I'm usually back in Detroit about two or three times a year. I'm actually going back in uh, a couple weeks here. Um, all my friend, family, friends, people there. Um, we're actually going to shoot a video for the joint I did with Aztec and Cancer while I'm home. Attack of the Beat Fiends. So, um, yeah, man, honestly, it, it, I, sometimes I feel guilty even being in Canada. And, I mean, I, I'm not balling by any means, but, I mean, there's health care here that I recently needed. I had to have uh, just a random surgery that if I, did, if I wasn't here and I was living back in Detroit, I probably still wouldn't have health insurance. Or if I did, I'm sure it wouldn't have been good enough to cover, you know, all of my surgery. So, I mean, sometimes I feel guilty being out here and, and you know, being afforded the things that, you know, Canadians just grown up having you know i remember i when i first moved out here um i was stoked about the health care because I, I was <laughs> you know in my 20s at that point still didn't have health care you know coming from detroit i just couldn't afford it with the job that i had and whatnot and just being able to if i broke my arm or even if i got a cold or something i can just go to the doctor here you know yeah 
So, I mean, stuff like that, uh, I mean, I hope you guys don't take it for granted. I think we do. I think think a lot of us truly do. It's like, it's touching to hear you talk about, like, how much that's really affected you and how that's, like, one of the trump cards of being up here is, like, that, you know, that benefit of the healthcare. Because I think a lot of people do really take it for granted, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, if if you've never, you, I mean, from the time, uh, I'm assuming you're Canadian, from the time you were born until... You, as long as you're a citizen here, you will have health care taken care of. You know, that's not something that we grew up with. So I can understand where people are kind of like, oh, well, it's not the best health care, this or that. I'm like, hey, you know, if you grew up where I grew up or, you know, a lot of places in the States, you know, most places, in the, you know, there's nowhere in the States that just offers, the government just doesn't offer health care. You know, either you, you, you get it from a good job and even then you're paying a portion of it out of your, you know, salary or whatnot. Or, you know, if you don't have a good job you, and you can afford at least the bare minimum to where if you did get in a car accident or something like that, you're not going to get a $10,000 bill after that, you know, not only having to deal with, you know, maybe having to be off work for that amount of time. So, yeah, I mean, it's it, it's definitely something that um, even being over here, I look at it at a different light. When I go back home, I see things a bit differently, you know, Um as far as the crime and everything goes, I mean, it's, yeah, it's a problem. You know, it's, I'm not going to say it's not, or I'm not talking bad about Detroit. I love Detroit. It's gonna, always going to be my home. And, and as far as the city and the history and the culture there, I mean, I think it gets overlooked a lot of times with everything bad that's going on there. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, there's, there's, I mean, music, Motown, there's a genre, a big genre of music was birthed there, you know, um, you mentioned before the steel industry and the auto industry. Um, my dad um, met his demise, we'll just say, at the actual steel industry. My dad was uh, accident had an accident on the job, and he died on the job. He worked for Detroit Edison at that time, which was a big steel plant in Detroit, just supplied everything, you know. Uh, same thing back then they ran the power too. If you got your power, you get it through Detroit Edison and whatnot. So, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it, it I don't want to s- go too much into it, but it, it is what it is. Detroit has a lot of great things to offer as well. Unfortunately, I mean, you can honestly, it goes back to the riots back in 67. We never really recovered from that. You know, uh, if you know, deeper history of Detroit. We had one of the, one of the biggest, still might be the biggest to date riots in U.S. history. So where, you know, my parents lived through it and there's tanks rolling down the street. And that was the decline where everything started moving, you know, mm-hmm. um, we'll just call it white flight started moving out of the city and moving, you know, 10, 15 minutes away. Um, doesn't matter what color you were. If you had the money and you could get out, a lot of people were leaving then. Even the auto industry, that was the first part where, you know, during the 70s, there was the negotiations made, you know, to start over shipping steel from everywhere else. And, yeah, a lot of people lost their jobs. I mean, mm-hmm. I want to say, don't quote me on this, but there's about 800,000 people in Detroit, you know, which is astronomically low when you look at the size of Detroit. And the fact that I want to say maybe even 15 years ago, there was 3.3 million, you know. So, yeah, you know, unfortunately, a lot of my, you know, friends and family are still there. And luckily, a good portion of them are doing fairly well, you know. Um, But I have had friends and family suffer the, you know, the demise of Detroit. You know, people that had houses and families, you know, all of a sudden, you know, really bad things happen and bad choices get made. And, you know, people lost their families, lost their lives, you know, to some of the things that have happened to Detroit and the people that live there. So what do you think that says? What do you think that says about like, I think society as a whole, I'm always so curious about these types of, you know, social situations where, you know, a, a whole city 
can, like you say, get get into an uproar and riot like that. Um, I wasn't too aware of that. I'm I'm glad that you're kind of educating me here a little bit on like the situation that happened there because I wasn't aware. And you know, I'm I'm just it it makes me think about because a lot of people say you know you know f the police and this and that and like you know we we don't need them and and all this and like what what how will we actually you know, run our own civilization and how are we going to act when all that stuff kind of goes away and, you know, we're all just trying to like fend for ourselves. I think it's, it's madness. I think in some senses, there's a lot of like good reasons why government is in place. And like, we have, you know, cops and all that kind of stuff out on the streets, like trying to protect people. Um, you know, aside from the dirty cops, I know there's straight up, you know, really bad cops out there, but at the same time, you know, I think we need, that kind of stuff still because it, it, look what happens. You, gotta, you, you have to have some form of of structure. You know, call it whether you want to call it government, whatever it is, there has to be some form of structure. But like you mentioned, dirty cops, corrupt politicians. If you look at Detroit's history, our mayor is in the pen right Our ex-mayor, <laughs> Kwame Kilpatrick, is in federal prison right now. Wow. For, what, what For what? For literally embezzling money from the city. Wow. Not only was Detroit in a state of distress. And he's uh, trying, wow. And that's he like kicking a man when he's down. Pretty much. I mean, that, that's the thing. You know, Detroit's like, you talk about fending for yourselves and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, we're going back to old Wild Wild West days, you know. But if you look at Detroit, Detroit is a city, well, Michigan is a state in general, that has an open carry license, meaning you, you can carry a sidearm, you know as long as you go through the proper channels to get your permit and do it the correct way. Yeah. So Detroit is one of those cities to where even though there is a high crime rate, I was home last November listening to talk radio. I don't know why, for some reason, (laughs) driving around, going somewhere, uh, and just happened to be on uh, a woman, a 50-year-old African-American lady coming out of the um, Metro Motor City Casino, one of the casinos, in a lighted parking lot with cameras was held up by three guys she was holding we'll just say she was back in she pulled out let like eight go hit two of them one of them got away somebody was calling in at you know it was talk radio so the debate was was it excessive force that she shot eight times and blah 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 wow we had a detroit i don't know who which one it was but it was a detroit police chief called in next saying no, she did not act out it. That's how we, you know, if you've ever gone to CCW course, they teach to, you know, shoot to stop the threat. You know, you get civilians start trying to hit people in the shoulders, and that's where stray bullets start flying. So it, it's kind of like a double-edged sword in Detroit, you know, and, and I'm sure a lot of maybe other big major cities in the U.S. Do, that have this law. You know, I've, I've debated with Canadians now that I'm out here about this law, and they're like, oh, well, more guns means more crime and as i was like not necessarily you know um if you look at most crimes even i mean a horrible crime that happened here in calgary a big stabbing i think one of the worst crimes that's happened here in calgary's history it was national news i believe was done with a simple kitchen knife it's not the gun that kills the person right uh you what cities like in states like michigan and detroit are doing and I mean, I, I want to say there's 30 some states that have this law implemented is putting guns in the laws of they're in the hands of law abiding citizens that go through the proper channels to get them to protect themselves because they happen to live in a dangerous city. Mm-hmm. You know, again, you know, we talk about the police. I mean, again, uh, the police are, you know, just as crooked as our mayor was, you know, we really have to look into Detroit's past history, you know. And honestly, for anybody interested, you know, the basis of the conversation seems to be about Detroit. There's a lot of good documentaries out there as well, too, that, you know, will we'll let you know. I mean, a lot of people just hear things on the radio about Detroit or on TV and, and have heard Eminem's story and that. I really don't know where it all started, you know. So, yeah. Yeah. That's that's good, man. I'm glad I'm glad you you know you know so much about it and you're passionate about it. You can tell you you know it's it's your your city, your hometown, and it's my city. I mean, anybody you meet from Detroit, you're gonna. It's one of the most, which is weird because you know it's not like our our, our city's really given back, but people are people are strong hearted in Detroit. You know, they love their city, and Mm -hmm. you know, you come from there, you got to be strong willed. You know, you you just got to be strong mentally. 
even more than physically, right? It's, I mean, I just I recently was on Facebook and seen that Detroit has a higher death toll than the country of Colombia. I guess, yeah, well, Colombia in general. That's just, that's, that's crazy. scary. You know, and the fact that the federal U.S. federal government is giving Colombia three hundred and some million dollars to help with with their, uh, I'm assuming problems. Yeah. And they're giving Michigan, or I don't know if it's Michigan or the state of Detroit, ninety some million. And thirty five million of that's going to improve roads. Two million is going to improve the police force. You know, and, and all the and all that stuff that really needs. You know, so it's just. It's kind of sickening, you know, when you really when you really start to look at it, right? But you know, it it is what it is right now, and and I can just hope that the city gets better. And uh, I mean, again, there's so much good stuff to offer. Food, like I said, I'm going home soon. I can't wait to eat all the good <laughs> Mexican food that's in Detroit. Uh, you know, Suicide Kings are playing a show, so I mean, all the good music, uh, the jazz in Detroit. I mean. Tigers, you know, I'm a big Tigers fan, so I'm looking forward to seeing a ball game and just, yeah, Detroit's a great city. Don't be scared. <laughs> Don't be scared. Just be careful. There you go. There's the lesson. Of, there's the lesson of the story right there. I like that. That's good, man. Word <laughs> Don't up. Be That's scared. Cool. Just be careful, you know? I like that, man. I like that. Thank you so much, man, for, for educating me a little bit on, on that situation and, and letting people know about, you know, Detroit and stuff. Cause I think, I think it's important to hear about this stuff. Everybody hears stories, but, you know, to be actual, to be actually hear a story from someone who's lived there, you know, that's, that's good. Yeah, man. No doubt. No doubt. And I'm glad to be in Canada. Don't get me wrong. I love it out here. <laughs> we just celebrated it. Canada Day. I did celebrate Canada Day. I did it just like we did Fourth of July. You know, had the had the barbecue and the whole nine yards, and you know, it was good. That's cool. And then you get to celebrate that as well in on Friday. <laughs> yeah, I do. July. Right? Yeah, the fourth is the fourth is this Friday. Yeah, and I'll be back home in a couple of weeks, so it'll be good. Right up. That's what's good, man. Well, much respects for uh, for doing the interview. Uh, you know, I mean, I hope Same to you, brother. Yeah. I hope to see you again. I'm sure I will at, on another tour, or another uh, adventure out here in the hip hop world. Yeah, it seems like we'll, well, I'm sure we'll cross paths again. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. All right, word up on a joint, uh, bump this uh, Snack the Ripper joint right here, the examples one that you did. Good, respect, man. Yeah, that's off, uh, uh, if you don't mind, the shameless plug really quick. Drop it. We did do a, um, we did do a vinyl of Crown of Thorns. Nice. Uh, I don't even know if you're aware of that, so if you're not, really quick. We did a vinyl of Crown of Thorns. Um, it's, it's out on a label out of Paris, France. Um, it's called Knives Out Records. So, I mean, you can order it from them. Uh, you can get it from us online. You can always just hit us on Facebook, uh, Suicide Kings Hip Hop. Um, everything Suicide Kings Hip Hop, uh, Instagram, web store, the whole thing. Um, yeah, so you mentioned the Snack the Ripper joint. That record is actually on there. Uh, we did a, that was like a bonus record. We did uh, an instrumental of Shot Callers that's on the actual vinyl. It's a picture disc, double-sided vinyl, so it, it's, you know, it's a really cool piece of artwork, you know, just alone. Matt Worthy from uh, Washington, who's done a lot of hardcore band covers like H2O and Madball and some, some really, you know, really big New York hardcore bands has done some artwork for, and a lot of other guys, uh, he just killed the artwork on it. So, That's dope. Matt, if you can imagine the, the CD on a, on a 12-inch picture disc vinyl, you know, it came out really nice. We put some uh, extra stuff on there. There's a there's an extra joint with uh, Danny Diablo, homie Danny did a track on there, um, and yeah, some instrumentals and stuff. So check that out if you're into the record. You know, uh, we appreciate it. You know, hit us up. We want to talk about anything? We're pretty cool guys, despite what you might hear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. With the Suicide Kings name, you're like, oh wait, should I stay away from them? I don't know. That's kind of yeah, scary. Right. We've had a couple, <laughs> you know, had some people have been like you know yeah, i don't know the names and you know you guys seem pretty aggressive i was like oh man we're cool man come smoke with us and have a drink and uh you know respect we respect everybody man as long as you got respect back man we just want to chill with everybody you know any any like-minded artists we want to work with you know if you like if you like what you hear man respect to anybody that bought the record even if you downloaded it for free and you're bumping it i don't even care just as long as you're listening to it. so And uh, big shout-outs to you, too, man. Robbie, thanks for doing the interview, bro. We appreciate that. No problem, man. Much respects. Good deal, man. You have a good night, man. All right, you too. All right, peace, brother.